The WAN 2.1 video model from Alibaba was only released a few weeks ago and has already claimed the top spot as the best local install, completely free and unlimited video generator currently available. In many respects, WAN 2.1 outperforms a lot of the paid video models out there. The Comfy team has now natively integrated WAN 2.1 in Comfy UI, making it even quicker and easier to install and use locally, without the need for additional custom nodes. Not only does WAN 2.1 stand out for its quality, open source availability, and unrestrictive Apache 2 license, but it can do text to video and image to video, with video to video capability also on the horizon. The additional huge plus for many of us is that it can run on a GPU with as little as 6 GB of VRAM. WAN 2.1 has a whole range of notable standout capabilities. It excels at generating realistic videos featuring complex motions. It generates videos that accurately simulate real-world physics and realistic object interactions. It creates cinematic quality with rich textures and a variety of stylized effects. It creates text and dynamic text effects in videos directly from text prompts. In this video, I'll only be focusing on the text-to-video capabilities of WAN 2.1. I'll cover its other capabilities in future videos. We'll start off by taking a look at some actual videos that I generated on my system to give you an idea of the results you can expect, as well as how long things take on a low VRAM GPU. We'll also take a look at a few comparison-generated videos to see how different models, text encoders, and steps affect the quality and generation times of the videos, so you get a better picture of which options you may want to choose. Then we'll step through the installation of WAN 2.1 and the key settings in the workflow that you'll need to know about to tweak for your own generation needs. I'll be running through everything on a Windows PC using ComfyUI Desktop, running an 8GB NVIDIA GPU, 80GB of RAM, and an SSD. I'll leave all the links and references that I cover in this video in the description below for you. Let's take a look at some actual videos that I generated on my machine that only has an 8GB GPU. For all of them, I've used the smallest text-to-video model and text encoder, which are the default ones used in the workflow. Although these give me the fastest generation times, they also give me the lowest quality. So if you're able to use the larger models and encoder, then you'll end up with much better quality results, although they'll take longer to generate. All the videos are pretty decent, although not perfect. There's some warping and deformations in a few areas, but all in all, they've turned out pretty good, especially as these are all the first generations created with the text prompts, and I didn't try to improve them further. It's surprising how well WAN 2.1 follows the text prompt. Anyway, hope these gave you a better picture of what you can expect using the very smallest and lowest quality WAN 2.1 files. Let's take a look at a few comparison video sets. With so many different options for WAN 2.1 models, encoders, and workflow settings, it can all get a bit confusing pretty quickly as to which combination to just select to generate the best video results with. So I've generated three sets of videos to compare different models, encoders, and generation steps so you can more easily see how changing a single factor can influence your video generation. This first comparison set compares four different models. All other settings remained constant for each generation. Unfortunately, due to only having an 8GB GPU, I wasn't able to test the two largest 14B, BF16, and FP16 models for you although I'm sure they'll give significantly better results but at slower speeds. In the top left, we have the 1.3B BF16 model. In the top right, the 1.3B FP16. Bottom left, the 14B FP8 simple. And the bottom right, the 14B FP8 scaled model. As expected, the 1.3B BF16 and FP16 models in the top row produced pretty similar results in terms of both prompt following and overall look and quality. The same goes for the bottom two 14B FP8 simple and scaled models. Both 14B FP8 models in the bottom row do produce a noticeably better quality than either of the 1.3B models in the top row. The second comparison set compares the FP8 text encoder against the FP16. The top row used the 1.3B BF16 model, with the top left using the FP8 text encoder and the top right using the FP16 text encoder. Both followed the overall prompt pretty well, 
although there's a couple of funky distortions in both videos, but certainly more in the FP16 video, especially with her feet and trying to drink through her nose. Overall, I'd say that the top left FP8 text encoder produced a better result. The bottom row used the 14B FP8 simple model, with the bottom left using the FP8 text encoder and the bottom right using the FP16. Both results are pretty similar and followed the prompt very well, but on this occasion the FP16 text encoder in the bottom right just produced a better overall result. Overall, I think it really depends on your specific video as to which text encoder to choose. Although I'm surprised that the FP16 didn't have a consistent edge over the FP8 text encoder. This third comparison set compares using a different number of generation steps. All other settings remained constant for each generation, and all the generations used the 1.3B BF16 model. The top left video used 20 steps, top right 30 steps, bottom left 40 steps, and the bottom right 50 steps. Clearly, the optimal number of steps for this particular video was the top right, with 30 steps. Although it's interesting how bad the results become with just moving the steps by 10. However, I'm sure not all videos will be best with 30 steps, but it certainly seems like a good generation starting point. This is the complete breakdown of all three of the comparison sets, including the generation times. Anyway, hope these examples and comparisons gave you a better insight for WAN 2.1 text-to-video expectations, and which combinations you may want to use. Now let's get into the installation and workflow details, so you can get on with generating videos for yourself. The first step is to update Comfy UI. The WAN 2.1 updates were only released by the Comfy team a couple of weeks ago, so we'll need to make sure we update to the latest version of at least 0.3.18, otherwise things will just not work. If you followed my Comfy UI desktop easy install video, then you don't need to do anything. Comfy UI will automatically update when you next launch it. If you aren't using the Comfy UI desktop version, then you'll need to go into your Comfy UI manager and update it manually. Okay, that's Comfy UI updated. On to the next step. The second step is to download the WAN 2.1 text-to-video diffusion models that we want to use. We'll open the Comfy UI WAN 2.1 Hugging Face page in our browser. We can access all the required files in the Comfy Example workflows from this page. To access the files, we'll open the Split Files folder, then the Diffusion Models folder. There's an ever increasing number of models being released here at the moment. We're interested in the T2V models for text to video in the bottom half of the list. There's a number of text to video models here. The smaller 1.3 billion parameter models only support 480p, whereas the larger 14 billion parameter models support both 480p and 720p resolutions. Since I've only got an 8GB GPU, we're realistically limited to the smaller 1.3b models. If you have more GPU VRAM, then you can choose one of the larger 14b models for better quality. The models come in BF16, FP16, and FP8 formats. In terms of quality, BF16 and FP16 are pretty similar, with FP8 lower quality but much faster. BF16 is a newer format, but is not compatible with some older GPUs, although it's compatible with my RTX 3070 GPU. We'll download the 1.3B BF16 model, which is the default one that we use in the workflow. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our comfy UI. Models, Diffusion Models folder. Okay, that's the text to video diffusion models done. On to the next step. The third step is to download the text encoders that we want to use. We'll go back to the split files folder, then into the text encoders folder. There's a choice between FP16 and FP8 formats. The FP16 should generally give us better results, and even though it's just over 11 GB in size, it runs fine with my 8 GB GPU, and possibly even a 6 GB GPU, although it will be slightly slower than the FP8 text encoder format. You may want to download both and compare them for yourself. For our purposes, we'll download the FP8 format, which is the default one that we use in the workflow. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our Comfy UI. Models. 
Text encoders folder. Okay, that's the text encoders done. On to the next step. The fourth step is to download the VAE. We'll go back to the split files folder, then into the VAE folder. There's only one VAE file, so it's nice and easy. We'll click the download file icon to the right of it. We'll save the file in our comfy UI. Models, VAE folder. Okay, that's the VAE done. On to the next step. The sixth step is to download the WAN 2.1 text video workflow that we'll open and use in Comfy UI. The Comfy team has provided an example workflow which only uses Comfy native nodes, so there's no need to install any additional custom nodes to run them. However, the workflow only saves the generated videos in WebP or WebM formats. I've taken this original workflow, cleaned it up and modified it to now save in any video format, including MP4. We'll be using this modified workflow in this video. However, it requires us to install the additional Comfy UI Video Helper Suite custom node, which we'll do in the next step. If you want to use the original Comfy Pure Native workflow, then just go back to the Hugging Face page. Go into the Example Workflows WAN 2.1 folder, and you can download the text to video WAN JSON in there. Let's download the modified WAN 2.1 text to video workflow that we'll use. We'll open the workflow page in our browser and scroll down a bit. We'll click the Download Workflow button. We'll save the file in our Comfy UI User in Default in Workflows folder. Okay, that's the workflow done. On to the next step. The seventh step is to install the Comfy UI Video Helper Suite custom node required to use the modified workflow. In Comfy UI, it will click Manager, then Custom Nodes Manager. We'll make sure we have the filter set to All. And in the search box, we'll type in Video Helper Suite. The Comfy UI Video Helper Suite custom node will be shown in the results. We'll just click the Install button. For version, we'll choose Latest, and then click Select. The custom node will install. Then we just need to click Restart. To restart Comfy UI and apply the custom node. Okay, that's the custom node installed. On to the next step. The eighth step is to take a look at the key settings of the workflow that you'll want to know about to make adjustments for your own video generation needs. Let's open the workflow. We'll click the workflows icon in the left sidebar. Then select the WAN 2.1 text to video native workflow. As you can see, it's actually a pretty simple and straightforward workflow. Let's start with the model loading and setup group. The clip name is the specific text encoder file that we want to use. The default is set to the FP8 that we downloaded, but you can also select the alternative FP16 here if you wanted to use that higher quality one. The UNET name is the actual WAN 2.1 diffusion model that we want to use. It's set at the default 1.3b, BF16 format that we downloaded, but you can select any of the WAN 2.1 models that you download and want to use here. Let's move on to the prompt encoding group. Both nodes are pretty much self-explanatory. Just override the default text with your own positive text prompt in the top node and your own negative prompt in the bottom one. Through trial and error, I found that providing a slightly more descriptive positive text prompt does work better, but if it's too long, I tend to get worse results. Including specific details about the camera movement, subject, environment, and background tends to produce better results for me. ChatGPT or the alternatives are great for crafting text-to-video prompts. Let's move on to the latent video creation group. This is where we make adjustments for the size and length of the video that we want to generate, keeping in mind that the 1.3b models support only 480p and the 14b models support both 480p and 720p. The default dimensions in the workflow have been set at the optimal 480p resolution of 832 by 480 pixels for a landscape aspect ratio, which can just be swapped around for a portrait aspect ratio. For 720p, these dimensions can be bumped up to 1280 by 720 pixels. For a square aspect ratio, 512 by 512 is best for 480p, and 768 by 768 for 720p. 
The default video length has been set at 33, which generates a two-second video at 16 frames per second. The latent frame number cuts off a frame or two from the actual generated video, so when we calculate the number of frames for our desired video length, we'll need a higher latent frame number. Fortunately, this length field will adjust our input number automatically. If we're using 16 frames per second for our video and want to produce a 3-second video, then 16 multiplied by 3 equals 48. If we try to add 48 into the length input box and press Enter, it will actually set it correctly to 49. Let's move on to the latent video generation group. The default settings are the most common and work well, but you can adjust these for your own specific needs. The control after generate has been set as default to randomize, to produce a different seed for every generation, but you can change this value if you wish. The default generation steps have been set to 30, but usually values between 30 and 50 tend to work well, depending on the video. The CFG default value has been set to 6, but values between 5 and 8 tend to work well, depending on the video. The sampler has been set at the newer Uni PC, with a simple scheduler that I've found works the best, but you could test others for your own needs. Let's move on to the final video combination and saving group. This is where we're using our video helper suite custom node. The default settings are the most common and work well, but you can adjust these for your own specific needs. The frame rate that we set here will be the base number that we'll use to calculate the latent video length that we talked about previously. A frame rate using the default number of 16 will be fine for most purposes, but increasing this number, for example to 24, it will give smoother videos, but of course will take longer to generate. I tend to use a lower frame rate to generate two second videos, and when I get one that I like, I regenerate it with the same seed and just bump the frame rate up to 24 and increase the length to 5 seconds. Unfortunately, every frame counts when you've just got an 8GB GPU. The default video format of MP4 has been set, but you can select from any of the many formats available. Okay, that's the key settings for the workflow done and everything covered for this one 2.1 text-to-video tutorial. Hope you found this video helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one.